Hi there. Welcome to your church. Today, I'd like to talk with you about becoming a more welcoming church. Back here, we've got Jack and Sally and little Jack Jack, and they're first time guests today. Hi. You guys ready? We got a bit of a hike. Let's do it, please. Most church members don't see their churches clearly. They think of their churches as friendly, open, welcoming. But when guests were surveyed, they typically saw church members as unfriendly, and they certainly didn't feel welcomed. Hello. The perception chasm existed because church members were indeed friendly to one another. Guests felt like they were crashing a private party. The problem is church isn't a country club. It's a place for broken people to come together and become a family. <clears throat> Sermon starting. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how to become a welcoming church. It's so good to see all of you here worshiping with us today. I know you have one hour less of sleep, so please don't fall asleep on me as I'm teaching here today. Um, I'm Tony Wallace, I'm one of the pastors here at Silverdale, and I get the privilege each week of sharing with you God's Word. You probably know this, that we are one church in many locations. We, we are one body, and yet we have nine weekend worship services. So I'm so thankful that you've chosen to be a part of this worship service. So this is what I encourage you to do. Go and take your Bibles and open up to Romans chapter 9. Or you can take out your smartphone, open that app to Romans chapter 9, and do this as well. Take out your Bible study outlines. They're found right here. You can follow along and take notes as we study God's Word together. And today, we really are going to talk about how to become a welcoming church. You see, the fact is, is that a lot of churches think that, you know what, we're fine. We're a world-friendly church. We are welcoming. Now, the truth is, is that the bigger our churches become, the less friendly we've become. Now, now, I rarely talk about this because it's sort of like so obvious that we should already know this, right? I mean, this is like saying please and thank you. I hope all of you know that as Christians, when you come to church, you're to be on your best behavior, and you're to look around, and you're to greet and love one another, and especially make welcome our guests. And yet the sad reality is that so many people come to church, and they don't do that. And it's now, you may think, that we have a real welcoming church, and yet now our church is getting a reputation in the community. It's a big church, but it's not that much of a friendly, welcoming church. And yet the Bible makes it very clear what kind of church we're called to be. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at a number of passages that teach us that we are to greet and welcome, especially guests. Let's start with Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, beginning verse 10. I'm going to read several verses, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and pull out some principles for our church from these verses. Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Look at what God's Word says. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord and seek to show hospitality. This idea is repeated by the Apostle Paul in Romans 15, 7. Look what God's Word says. Welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you. Aren't you glad Christ invited you in? Yeah. We're to have that same welcoming spirit. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2, puts it like this. Do not neglect to show hospitality to one another, right? Especially to strangers. Now, we may go, oh, wait a minute. Are, are, I know I'm supposed to be hospitable and have hospitality and love the people that are around me. Are you telling me I'm supposed to do that with strangers? Yes. In fact, Jesus said that's the way he describes himself sometimes. Look at this passage in Matthew chapter 25. Jesus said at the end times of the final judgment, he's going to say this to some people. He's going to say this. I was a stranger and you welcomed me in. And we're going to say, Lord, when did we ever see you as a stranger? And this is his reply. Look at verse 40. He'll say, as you did it to the one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Jesus said, I was a stranger and you invited me in. And so what we want to do from those verses, I want us to learn what does it mean to become a welcoming church? 
Now, now, the truth is that at the beginning of this year, I encouraged you and said, you know, the theme for our church year is making room. And what we're trying to do as a church, we're trying to make room so that we can effectively reach this community for Jesus Christ. Now, you're going to see in the next few months a lot of building activity going on around here, a lot of construction. Why? Because we are making room in our facilities to reach more and more people for Jesus Christ. But this year, our church theme is you need to make room in your heart for people. You need to open up your heart to people around you. And so I asked you to start praying for your one. And then inviting your one, this person that may not know you, invite them to church so that they can come to know Christ. But wouldn't it be sad, wouldn't it be heartbreaking if you prayed all year for your one, and then you invited them to church, and they came and saw that the people you worship with are really not all that friendly. That'd break your heart, wouldn't it? And yet we're called to be a welcoming church. Not, not every church is that welcoming to guests. You may have heard the story of this one lady who was visiting a church. And an usher greeted her and said, where would you like to sit? And she said, I'd like to sit up front. And he said, well, I wouldn't really recommend that. And she goes, really? Yeah, you see, our pastor, he's sort of boring. And um, she goes, well, do you know who I am? And he goes, no. She goes, I'm the pastor's mother. And he goes, do you know who I am? And she goes, no. And he goes, good. And he runs away. <laughs> well, you know, the fact is, is that not all churches are that welcoming. They have that great of a first impression. And yet we're called to be. Now, the problem with a lot of us as Christians and members of a church is that we've been here a long time. And, and, and we already have set relationships and people that we know here. But we have forgotten what it's like to walk in the shoes of the first-time guest. This is a big place. It's pretty intimidating to come into this place. You've got known relationships. Well, they don't know anybody. They don't know where the bathroom's at. They don't know where to check the kids in at. They don't know where the auditorium's at. And we often forget that's what people experience every week whenever they come to visit us. Now, there's been a number of surveys that have been done about first-time guests and their impressions of church. In fact, I want you to jot this down at the very top of your outline. What guests feel when they visit church? What is it that guests feel when they visit church? A couple things. Number one is this. First of all, they felt isolated. They felt isolated. They're surrounded with, by hundreds of people, and yet they felt isolated. Now, whenever they came, they were greeted by somebody at the door and maybe given you know, a worship guide, but they didn't know what to do next. They didn't know where the bathrooms were. They didn't know where the auditorium was. And they just sort of wander through the, meander through the halls. And, and then finally, they make themselves into the auditorium. And they sit down in the auditorium. And they wait. And nobody talks to them. And, and they said that that's the most isolating time because they see everybody else having relationships and talking with each other. And yet, they just sit there all alone. Now, why is it that we don't reach out and talk to people like that it's real simple we're like we don't know them we don't know their name it'd be awkward to introduce myself to somebody let me just say get over yourself right just say hey you know what i don't know this person but i can introduce myself to them yeah we can do this right that's what we're called to do now, the fact is, is that most guests, when they come to church, they just feel isolated. Second thing that they felt is this, jot this down. They felt confused. They felt confused. You see, there's a lot of people that come to our church that do not have a church background. Now, that's a good news, right? I am so thankful. We have so many people from our community that don't know Christ, maybe don't have a church background, and they come to church, they come to check it out, right? And, and the thing is, that's a good thing. But the problem is, is that we sort of have this insider knowledge. You see, whenever worship starts, we all intuitively know, let's all stand up. And then whenever worship's over, we all sit down. I've seen it some Sundays that, you know what happens? You know, everybody else sits down, and the guests are like, are we supposed to sit down? Nobody told us what to do, right? Or, or then we have like this, we have insider language in churches. Well, the students, they meet in the SMB. We've got a meeting at the Silverdale Room. If you would like more information about that, contact Bob. And they're like, who's Bob? What's an SMB? 
Or then you have preachers like me that we use, you know, theological language or some Greek word and we don't explain it. And they'll leave church thinking that they've listened to a foreign language all day. And yet here's the deal. Individuals who felt welcomed, that isolation and that confusion all disappears. And it all depends on whether or not we're going to be in welcoming church. I had one of our church members who was out of town and visited another church, and she emailed me about her experience at this other church. And I thought, this is great. Listen to what she wrote. She said this, Pastor Tony, recently we visited another church. When we drove into the parking lot, we saw that they had guest parking. When we got out of the car, a lady saw us and introduced herself. With a big smile, she said, hi, I'm Cindy. I'm so glad that you're worshiping with us today. Is this your first time to visit with us? After we replied a positive manner, she walked us to a welcome center. At the center, she introduced us by name to a person at the desk who immediately offered to help us and gave us directions to important areas of the church, such as the restrooms or the auditorium. And we were about to end our conversation, and Usher walked up, and she introduced us to him. He then led us into our seats in the auditorium. In just a few short minutes, we had been introduced by several friendly people, our names are mentioned three different times, and we're given all the initial information we needed. And then as we were seated in the auditorium, waiting for the service to begin, another lady came up to us and greeted us. She engaged us in conversation about our week and found out that we were guests. And then after the service was over, she spoke to us again. We left and we really felt like we were welcome in that church. They were so friendly. That's the way the church is supposed to be. That's the way it's supposed to operate. That's the way our church should be. And yet, we throw out the welcome mat each week, and people come here, and they don't feel welcomed. I mean, let me put it to you like this. Have you ever shown up at somebody's house, and it was a sort of surprise visit? Maybe your relative, and you just showed up unannounced, and they're doing like, what are you doing here, right? And you caught them. It was supposed to be a surprise, but you actually embarrassed them, right? There's dirty dishes in the kitchen, and there's toys scattered about, and they're halfway through the laundry. And rather than saying, hey, so good to see you, they go, what are you doing here, right? Well, well that's the way sometimes guests feel when they come to church. We put out a welcome mat to our community. Come on in. Everybody's welcome here. And when they come here, they feel like, you know what? They're isolated. That they're, they're not supposed to be here. But you know what happens whenever you know somebody's coming over? What do you do? You pick up the house. You plan for them, right? Everybody's on their best behavior. And when somebody shows up, you greet them at the door and say, Hey, so good to see you. Come on in. And you feel like an honored guest. Well, folks, that's the way it should be at our church. When people come here, they should feel like an honored guest. Like, wow, these people love me. They really care about me. See, here's the deal. You only get one opportunity to make a good first impression. That's it. And most people will determine whether they're going to visit a church again long before they ever hear the preacher talk. And so how do we become a welcoming church? Well, there's several things that I want you to jot down. We're going to pull these out of the scriptures that we read earlier. First thing is this. Jot this down. I want you to think about the mindset of a friendly church. The mindset of a friendly church. You see, if you ever change your actions, you got to change your thinking. And the problem with a lot of us as Christians, we have the wrong concept and mindset whenever we come to church. You see, I believe that a lot of people have one of two concepts about church. They either look at church as a cruise ship or they look at church as a battleship. So let's think about those two. If you're here and maybe you have this idea that the church is a cruise ship, right? Think about a cruise ship. I mean, cruise ship is filled with passengers. And the passengers are all being served by this overworked crew, right? And you're just there to lounge and have a good time. And you're on a cruise. You're on a vacation, right? And everybody's there to serve you. Well, some of you have the mindset that when you come to Silverdale, it's Silverdale cruise ship. And you're just here to be served, and you're here just as a consumer for other people to look after your needs. That's one concept of church. The other concept is that of a battleship, okay? A battleship. Now, you, there's a huge difference between the two, right? In a battleship, there are no passengers. 
No passengers. The battle, I mean the battleship, they have a mission. And everybody on board is given a specific task. And everybody, depending on if they do their task, that will determine whether or not the mission is accomplished or not. Folks, I've got good news for you. It may be shocking news. Our church is not a cruise ship. Our church is a battleship. We are on mission for Jesus Christ to reach this community, and we will only do that if every one of you understand you're not a passenger here. You have been given a task from Almighty God. And only depending on how well you do that task will determine if we accomplish this mission or not. So you got to change your mindset about church. Two things that I want you to think about whenever it comes to changing your mindset about church. First of all, you need to change this. You need to have this mindset. We're going to put others first. Jot that down. That when you come to church, you have this mindset that says, I'm going to look out and put others before me. Now, let's look back at our passage in Romans chapter 12. Let me set this up for you. The Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Rome, and there were some divisions in that church. You had these, these different groups, these different sects. You had the Jews and the Gentiles, and they weren't rolling together. Right? I mean, you had the Jewish Christians, they were hanging out over here, and the Gentile Christians were hanging out over here. And the Apostle Paul said, no, y'all are supposed to be working and serving and loving each other. And so look at what he says in Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Look at what he says. He says, you are to love one another with brotherly affection. That means you're to love one another like family. Now, I know that every one of you have a family. And you, you have this unique bond with your family natural family, right? I mean, I love my parents. I love my siblings. I, I love my children. There's a natural bond. And even if you've got a dysfunctional family, you still love them, don't you? Crazy aunt and all. You still love them. You do. There's just natural sacrifice and love for your family. That's the case. But you know what? We have, God's given us a spiritual family. We all have one heavenly father. We have an elder brother, Jesus Christ, and we're all called to be brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And that means that, you know what? We may have a dysfunctional family here, but you're still supposed to love one another and sacrifice for one another and care for one another. That's what we're called to be as a church. But then notice the second phrase Paul uses. He says this. He says, outdo one another in showing honor. I love that phrase, outdo one another in showing honor. You know what it means to honor? It means, oh, <gasps> Wow, I am honored to be in your presence, right? You see, we live in a culture. It's a me generation we live in today. And what is that? Well, you got to look out for number one. And we, we want to be honored. We want to be put on the pedestal. And the Apostle Paul is saying, no, you try to outdo one another in honoring one another. That's what we're called to do. I heard about a guy who had visited a hundred churches. And only two of them other than greeters and ushers, somebody spoke to him. Think of it. Over 100 churches, and only two of them, other than greeters and ushers, had somebody in that church talk to him. We were one of the churches that didn't talk to him. Why? Because we're not honoring one another the way we're supposed to. Look at the next phrase Paul says in verse 11. He says, do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Paul's saying what? This ain't a cruise ship. You're not here to be a sloth. You're not here to be a consumer. You're here to serve, right? Now, I know that in our church we have hundreds of ministries. And I hope that every one of you have a place of ministry, a place of service. If you don't yet, can I encourage you? Would you please be a part of our guest services ministry? We desperately need people that have this kind of heart that will welcome people. We need people that will greet folks in the parking lot. We need people that will be at the welcome desk, that will give information or escort people around this building. We need, you know, greeters at every door. We need ushers, you know, to guide people in here. We need people. In fact, you know there's one type of ministry that I would love for us to now have as part of our greeter ministry, and that is I wish that I had a greeter in every section in every auditorium. You know, that literally somebody go, this is my section. And somebody comes in there and sits down, and you know what? They go and they say, hey, and they interact and they get to see people and get to talk with people that they literally make sure that everybody in that section they felt greeted right 
And then after the service, they go back to him and say, thank you so much for visiting with us today. That would be amazing, right? I've determined that we need at least 30 people in our greeter ministry, our guest services for every service we have. That means we got nine services. We need over 300 people every weekend to serve in guest services. Now, again, if you're part of some other ministry, I'm not trying to pull you from any other ministry, but if you're not, I'd love for you to be in guest services. You may go, well, well what's the qualifications? You gotta be faithful, gotta show up. You gotta have a servant heart. You, you gotta have a joyful greeting, and you gotta have a helpful disposition. If that's you, sign up. In fact, we've made it really simple for you. Now, I put this on your outline. It's up on the screen as well. You can simply go to, on, on website, sbcserve.com. If you go sbcserve.com, and then whenever you get there, all you got to do is press guest services, that button, guest services. And I'm telling you, within five minutes, you can fill out some information, and you can tell them what service you attend, and what part of the, the guest services you'd like to be a part of, and we'll plug you in. We'll train you. Somebody will contact you. And hopefully, before Easter gets here, we'll have hundreds of people ready to welcome the guests that are going to come here. So I know that some of you, you hear all that and go... I'm not doing that. I ain't going to serve in that way. Fine. But I still have a responsibility for you. Because it doesn't matter whether you're part of guest services or not. I'm giving this responsibility to every one of you in this room. What's that? I expect you to have a 10-foot radius around you that you will greet and welcome every person around you in a 10-foot radius. That whenever you come in here, your first response is not, okay, got my seat. No, your first response is maybe you set your stuff down and you go, okay, Pastor Tony said 10 foot radius. I got to greet people. And you know what? You're going to introduce yourselves to people and you're going to meet guests and you're going to welcome them. You're going to make them feel loved, right? And, and don't just do it during the meet and greet time. Because to be honest, most guests feel like that is so insincere. Nobody talked to me before the meet and greet time and nobody talked to me after the meet and greet time. It's just hypocrisy. No, look for people, greet them, love on them, right? And then when the service is over, hey, thanks for being here today. So whether you're part of the greeter ministry or not, you have that responsibility. Everybody in this room has that responsibility, okay? Now, if you can be a part of guest services, sign up to be a part of it. But if not, you still have a responsibility to be a welcoming member of this church. Make sense? Why is this so important? Because hospitality should be what we're known for in this community. Look how the Apostle Paul includes this section in verse 13. And he says, and seek to show hospitality. Man, we're all so busy. We're on the run all the time. We don't have time to just slow down and have hospitality and love and spend time with people. And yet, did you know that half of Jesus' ministry was done around meals? Think about that. I'll tell you what, if you really want to make an impact on somebody, you greet somebody, you meet somebody new, and then after the service, go to them and say, hey, we're about to go out for lunch. Why don't you join us for lunch? They'll go, oh, really? Yeah. I bet they'll be back next week. Why? Because they experience your hospitality. See, here's the deal. People come in here, and they're not looking for a friendly church. They're ultimately looking for a friend. And so we got to change our mindset that when we come here, it's not about us. It's about others. But there's a second mindset that we've got to change as well if we're going to be a welcoming church. And it's this. Jot this on your outline. We need to treat guests like we would treat Jesus. We need to start treating the people around you like you would treat Jesus if, if, if he was right next to you. Now, this isn't far-fetched. That's, in essence, what Jesus said in Matthew 25. Jesus said at the final judgment, he's going to say this to certain people. He's going to say this. He's going to say, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. And we're going to go, Lord, when did I ever see you as a stranger? Look at it again, verse 40. As you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Did you know that that was the exact mindset of Mother Teresa? I mean, think about it. M Mother Teresa ministered to the poorest of the poor in Calcutta, India. And she loved them and ministered to them and cared for them and, and mended up their hurts. But she didn't see people just as hurting, needy people. 
She said, every time I looked into somebody's eyes, I imagined I was looking in the eyes of Jesus himself. And every time I loved on somebody, I imagined that I was loving on Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus said we need to do to one another, have that kind of mindset. The very first ministry that I was a part of as a brand new Christian, I'd become a Christian, I was almost 20 years old at the time, and our church had a bus ministry back then. And what we would do is on Saturday mornings, we'd go visit the poorest of the poor neighborhoods in our community, and we'd talk to the parents and say, hey, we'd love to pick up your child and take them to church with us. And um, most of them have said, great, awesome, you know, get them out of our hair, we'll get two hours without them being around, you know, maybe sleep in. That's, I know that was their attitude, but, you know, they would send the kids on to church. And so the kids would come to church, and you know what? These kids, they were from poor neighborhoods, and they were often ill-behaved and ill-mannered, and you know, they didn't dress nice, and they, were, you know, they weren't used to sitting still in a worship service. And we were doing that for several months, and some of the um, more dignified members of First Baptist Church didn't like these rugrats messing up our church services. Now, I was a new Christian, and I didn't understand their attitude and I told them so and I said look can I tell you something this may be the only couple hours all week long that these kids get loved on and do you understand this may be the only time in their life that they ever get to hear about Jesus Christ and they're not a bunch of rugrats there are children made in the image of God and we need to treat them like that and that's what Christ is telling us in this passage Listen, every person that comes through these doors is someone who's made in the image of God. Every person you, you look in their eyes, that's someone for who Jesus Christ suffered and died for. And we need to love them just as if we were loving Jesus. And I'm telling you something, if our church starts loving people like that, <laughs> this place will be filled. People will flock here to experience that kind of love in relationship with Jesus Christ. But that's got to be the mindset that we have when we come to church. Well, does this really make a difference? I believe it does. And that's the final thing I want you to jot on your outline, the impact of a friendly church. What is the impact of a friendly church? I believe that we make an eternal impact on people's lives when we are a friendly church. I love this quote from Michael Knowles. He puts it this way. In the kingdom of God, strangers on the doorstep represent a gift and opportunity from God. I love that. Every guest here is a gift and opportunity from Almighty God. And you go, why would you say that? Because we now live in a postmodern, post-Christian world. And our society, they look upon us with skepticism. And they don't trust organized religion, the church. And they don't believe in absolute truth, the word of God. And yet, they still come here. And so if a person comes here, you know God is doing a work in their heart, drawing them here. And whenever they come here, do you know what they need to see? They need to see Jesus. And with every greeting, with every smile, they need to see Jesus. And as we are worshiping together, they see the, pas the passion and devotion of our worship of Jesus Christ. They need to see Jesus. And when I'm speaking the word of God, they need to see Jesus Christ. But if they come here and they feel isolated and they don't feel welcomed and they see no passion in your devotion and worship of Jesus Christ, do you know what they're going to conclude? They're going to conclude that this is just a religious country club and they don't need that because they don't fit in. Well, folks, <laughs> the church of Jesus Christ is for every person on this planet. Everyone's to be welcome. And when they come here, I want our church to be characterized with the same character of Jesus Christ, that this is a place of grace and truth. In fact, I love that's how Jesus is described. In John chapter 1, verse 14, the apostle John describes Jesus this way. We observed his glory, the glory as the one and only son from the father. Look at it, full of grace and truth. Circle grace and truth in your outline. I mean, think about Jesus' ministry. Jesus constantly exuded grace and truth. He embodied it. I mean, think about the woman who was caught in adultery. Everybody else is standing with stones ready to stone her. And what does Jesus say? I don't condemn her. That's grace, folks. 
But then he turns to the woman and says, go and sin no more. That's true. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be in this church. That, you know what, we put out the welcome mat and we say to this community, come as you are. No matter what your background, no matter what your baggage, you are welcome at Silverdale Baptist Church. That's grace. But whenever they come here, guess what? They're going to hear the truth of God, and Christ will begin to change their lives. That's truth, grace and truth. I mean, some churches have this mindset that, okay, you got to clean yourself up before you can ever come. I mean, Jesus didn't put it that way. In fact, Jesus calls us to do what? Be fishers of men. It's almost like he says, you catch them, I'll clean them, right? That's what Jesus does. We invite people in. They're welcome. They hear the truth from the word of God. Christ changes them and cleans them up. And how does that affect you? Well, you see, I'm up here at stay, on stage. You're right there next to folks. And they're going to observe you. They sort of look at me and go, well, he's supposed to be good, right? But if you love somebody and care for somebody and encourage somebody and they see authenticity in your faith, you become the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. And literally by us becoming a welcoming church, it is the first step that many people have in their walk of faith in Jesus Christ. It's just that critical. Most of you have probably heard the story of Mahatma Gandhi. He tells in his autobiography that whenever he was in college, he was reading the Gospels of Jesus Christ. And he was coming to the conclusion that, you know what? Jesus Christ is the answer for this world. And he's like, and especially the answer for India and their caste system. And, and so as he was reading the Gospels, he determined that one Sunday he was going to go visit a church and talk to a minister afterwards about becoming a follower of Jesus Christ. But here's the problem. He came to an unfriendly church. He came to the church, and whenever he came in, an usher greeted him and said this, you need to go worship with your own people. And Gandhi left disillusioned and thought, if Christians have a caste system, why should I ever convert to Christianity and leave Hinduism? So he never did. Can you imagine the impact that Gandhi would have made if he had become a Christian? I'm telling you, I mean, he's the most influential person in the history of India. If he had become a follower of Jesus Christ, millions would have come, become followers of Jesus Christ. But it didn't happen. Why? because he went to an unfriendly church and met a racist usher. Do you understand? Every weekend, eternity is in the balance. People come here and, and they're seeking, they're wondering, is this whole Christianity thing real? They're investigating and you can be that first step in their steps of faith to Jesus Christ. But it all starts with a welcoming church. Now at the beginning of this year, I said, I want you to pray for your one. And then, as God leads you, invite them to be a part of these services. Why? So that they can know Jesus Christ just like you know Jesus Christ. Now, there's going to be several times during the year that we encourage you, hey, this will be a great weekend to bring your one. The next one on our church calendar is Easter. We're going to have 11 weekend worship services. And, and Lord willing, they're going to hear heavenly music and down-to-earth teaching of God's word. But if we become a welcoming church by then, people are going to encounter Jesus Christ in our love. And you know what's going to happen? I believe hundreds of people are going to come to faith Easter weekend. But it's not going to happen unless we become a welcoming church. Folks, this is what we're called to be. We're called to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but whenever you do invite your one, or better yet, whenever they say to you, hey, would you invite me to church? Would you take me to church with you? And that whenever they come here, they meet people that love them, encourage them, and welcome them, just like Jesus said, I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. Folks, let's start loving like Jesus, and let's become the welcoming church Christ has called us to be. Amen?